Good morning and welcome to Pre-Calculus 4, Trigonometry and Inverses. And you're going to have to pause this probably quite a bit because I'm just going to move through. Alright, we'll start out with y equals a sine bx. Do you remember what the period was? Period was 2 pi over the absolute value of b. How about the frequency? Do you remember that? That would be b. And the amplitude, yes, of course, that is a. Okay, how about to uh, convert degrees to radians? Okay, to convert degrees to radians, take the angle, multiply by pi over 180. That'll change the degrees to radians. Change radians degrees. Take the radians and multiply by pi over 180. Moving right along. Trig identities. Remember the first and most important trig identity? Let you think about it for a minute. Okay, I lied for a second or two. And there it is. Sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. The other two trig identities can be found by dividing each term by either sine squared x or cosine squared x. Alright, if you divide by each term by sine squared x, you will get 1 plus cotangent squared x equals cosecant squared x. If you divide each term by cosine squared x, you'll get tangent squared x plus 1 equals secant squared x. And now I feel like I'm running uh, movie credits because I think I'm just going to scroll these along and see if you can catch them as they move. First we'll do some indifference identities. The sine of a plus b equals sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b. And then the minus would also be minus sine. Pay careful attention to the fact that uh, cosine, if it's a plus b, then it's going to be uh, a minus sign in the identity. And if it's cosine a plus b, sorry, and if it's cosine a minus b, then in the identity it's going to be a plus sign. The sign switches on that. Okay, reduction identities. Sine of negative x equals negative sine x. Cosine of negative x equals cosine x. Tangent of negative x equals negative tangent of x. That kind of shows that uh, sine and tangent are symmetric about the origin and cosine is symmetric about the y-axis. Double angle identities, sine of 2x equals 2 sine x cosine x, and the cosine of 2x could possibly equal one of those three terms. And filling out the uh, trig wheel, yeah, I think we'll do that in class. So if you need any help there, we'll move along and we'll do that in class. All right, and then on the, the coordinate plane, I think you've all heard this already, but we'll try it again. There. All students take calculus. That says that all six trig functions are positive in the first quadrant. S uh, for students stands for sine, so sine and cosecant, it's reciprocal, are positive in the second quadrant. Take T tangent and its reciprocal cotangent are positive in the third quadrant and C calculus cosine and its reciprocal secant are positive in the fourth quadrant. There, how did you like uh, trigonometry boiled down to about five minutes, a whole semester, uh, trimester's worth. Yeah, 
You're welcome. All right, inverse fun functions. The definition is g is the inverse of function f if uh, f of g of x equals x and g of f equals x. f inverse of x is also a notation that we may use for the inverse of f of x. All right, now we're going to show that f of x and g of x are inverses. f of x equals 1 minus x cubed and g of x equals the cube root of 1 minus x. So we need to show that f dot g of x equals x and we also need to show that g dot f of x equals x. Well, this may not be real clear to you, but it might be kind of foggy, but f dot g of x, all that is, is a fancy schmancy way of writing f of g of x. Alright, so we need to find f of g of x, f of the cube root of 1 minus x. So we're going to take that and put it up in here for x. And we'll end up with 1 minus the cube root of 1 minus x, that quantity cubed. So we'll end up with 1 minus 1 minus x. 1 minus 1 plus x and lo and behold we get x. Now going back the other way g dot f of x the same thing as g of f of x. So take f of x and throw it in for where x is. We have to find out what g of 1 minus x cubed is. So the cube root of 1 minus 1 minus x cubed let me get some room here please that would be the cube root of 1 minus 1 plus x cubed, wow, cubed, cube root of x cubed, which would equal x. So, f of g of x equals x, and g of f of x equals x. So those are inverse functions of each other. All right, I'd like you to try it on your own now, so go ahead and try to show that f of x and g of x are inverses. Uh, you know the routine by now. Go ahead and pause it as you need to, and then uh, after you're done doing your work, go ahead and hit the play button and your answer, well, my answer should be there and hopefully they match. And there you have that f of g of x equals x and g of f equals x. Let's go ahead and move on and talk a little bit more about inverses. Alright, what we have here is a very quick uh, graph of y equals ln of x and the graph of y equals e to the x. Now, inverses are always reflections uh, of each other in a certain line and that line is the line y equals x. 
So in that line y equals x, these two inverses are a reflection of each other. So therefore, since inverses are reflections of each other in the line y equals x, therefore the function must pass the horizontal line test to have an inverse. Because if it can't pass the horizontal line inverse when you reflect it in the uh, line y equals x, then it won't be a function because it won't pass the, uh, or, uh, the vertical line test. So function must pass the horizontal line test to have an inverse. Guidelines for finding a ver uh, an inverse, number one, check and make sure it passes the vertical line test. Two, switch x and y and solve for y. Or first solve the equation for x, then switch x and y. Third guideline, the domain of f of x will be the range of f inverse of x, and the range of f of x will be the domain of f inverse of x. And the last guideline, um, a function and its in inverse uh, composite function will yield x, so you have to show both ways that they yield x. Now let's go ahead and look at a specific function and see if we can uh, show that it, it, it has an inverse. All right, what you have in front of you is f of x equals x cubed minus 1. You know the drill. Go ahead and uh, work on it. See if you can find an inverse and then show that uh, the composite function of the inverses yields x in both directions. And then check your answer with me. All right, I found that the inverse function was f inverse of x equals the cube root of x plus 1. And then when I did the composite function of both, they yielded x. So I'm pretty confident about that. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, work on the next one. Go ahead. Find the inverse function of that. All right, there is f inverse of x, the square root of x squared minus four. Now you need to show that the composite function, the composite functions of the function and its inverse yields x. Go ahead and pause. Okay, so f of x squared minus four yields an x and f inverse of x squared plus 4 also yields an x. So that shows that that, that that is the inverse. And lastly, one of my favorite uh, concepts about uh, inverses. f and g are inverses. f of 1 is 3, f of 3 is 7, f of 10 is 8. Please tell me what g of 7 is. remembering that the domain and range of those inverse functions are switched. That's right, g of 7 is 3. Since f of 3 was 7, g of 7 had to equal 3. This does conclude pre-calc 4 trigonometry and inverses.